What's up guys? Welcome to this episode of the Budding Watch Enthusiast. Here on this channel, I review and discuss wristwatches from the perspective of a newer watch collector. If you enjoy this video, definitely check out my other videos and click the red subscribe button and ring the bell icon down below. So today, uh, a review. Uh, we are reviewing the Winfield Watch Company Mission Timer 1. Now, this was loaned in to me uh, by the Winfield Watch Company. So watch the first came on my radar though when one of my collaborators uh, in watch this, John Keel, uh, bought one himself recently. This is recently released and he uh, unboxed it on his channel and I was immediately interested and Winfield reached out shortly thereafter. I've spent about a week and a half with this watch now and uh, and it's time to give you my thoughts on it. But of course, before we get into the review, let's talk about the specs on this watch. So the Mission Timer 1 comes in a 316L uh, bead blasted stainless steel case uh, that the Winfield website says is also heat treated. Uh, for enhanced durability. Uh, if we flip it over here, you see a brushed uh, screw down case back with some nice radial brushing along the outside there. It's decorated with the Winfield uh, branding and logo on the case back there. If we flip back over, uh, a double domed sapphire crystal, which uh, adds some nice visual interest here to the dial when looking at it from certain deep angles. The screw down crown on this watch, you see stamped there with the Winfield logo. And this whole package uh, gives the Winfield Mission Timer 1 a 200 meter water resistance rating. So as far as the dimensions of this watch go, the width is 41 millimeters, uh, the lug to lug length is 48 and a half millimeters, the height is 13 and a half millimeters, and the strap width is 20 millimeters. Now, if we zoom in a little bit on the dial, uh, first let's start with the bezel. So you see an aluminum insert in here on this bezel, um, 120 click, unidirectional bezel that's topped off with that nice uh, red triangle at the 12 o'clock position there. But as you can see, the numbers are actually reversed with what you would normally see from a dive time bezel. Uh, that's because this is a countdown bezel. So the way that this one works, uh, let's say I want to set like a, you know, a 30 minute timer. Uh, I would roll the 30 over to where the minute hand currently sits. And then when the minute hand gets to the red triangle, uh, 30 minutes have elapsed. Personally, uh, I think that this is a much more useful feature uh, in most cases uh, for most, you know, because most of us that have watches like this aren't using them for diving, uh, but you don't see it on too many other watches out there. Now the dial here, I thought when I, uh, when I first saw this in pictures, just was a really cool looking vibrant gray color. And it turns out that this is actually achieved uh, by bead blasting a brass dial and then PVD coating it uh, in a dark charcoal color. So again, I, I don't know if any other watches do that. Uh, this is the first that I've ever heard of it, but it gives it a really rich uh, gray color that you can see there as well. That looks very different depending on what light uh, you happen to be capturing it in. If we look on the outside here, you see a railroad minute track that uh, runs along the outside of the dial. You see uh, round markers uh, at most of the hour points, but then the square markers at the cardinal positions to help uh, differentiate those a little bit. Inside of that, uh, some modestly sized hour numerals that run along the inside of the watch. These are painted with a pretty generous amount of C3 Super Luminova. Uh, the lume on this watch is actually really impressive as you guys are seeing on the screen right now. And the markers also seem to be a little bit tinted uh, that kind of let them match the numerals that are on the bezel as well. Of course, the black rimmed hands on the watch are extremely legible thanks to this very stout uh, broad hour hand that you see on the watch. And then you see that red seconds hand running along uh, that gives a nice little pop of color uh, that's welcome. You also see the red, uh, it's kind of faint here, but on the other side of the 12 marker and of course in the triangle on the bezel. Uh, a date window at 4.30, which thankfully has a dark background as opposed to a white background, which would have completely thrown off the dial, uh, in my opinion. And then you see the Winfield uh, logo and branding here at 12, and then the water resistance information at 6. And those are both done in a relatively small font, which thankfully keeps the dial feeling uh, nice and clean, nice and open, uh, and not cluttering it up. Inside the watch beats a Ronda 715 uh, lithium quartz movement. So the Ronda 715, but with a lithium battery, which means that you do get a 10-year battery life on this watch. Of course, it also hacks 
and the uh, accuracy rating for this particular movement is between minus 20 and plus 10 seconds per month. The black leather strap that's included with the Mission Timer 1 has some really beautiful uh, red accent stitching uh, on either end. It's also topped with this very nice tang buckle that's finished in the same way that the case is, of course, branded with the Winfield information there as well. The watch also includes a NATO strap uh, of your choosing between the four different colors they have available. Uh, this is the gray and gold one that was sent uh, in with Winfield with this watch. And uh, I believe that this is a Blue Shark Alpha Shark, uh, if I'm not mistaken. At least it surely looks and feels like one. Uh, but I guess that could be corrected if that's not the case in the comments down below. And here's what the Mission Timer 1 is looking like on my 8-inch wrist. I think the dimensions of this watch are going to lend itself uh, to a really wide variety of wrist sizes. I like the fact that because the watch is so well proportioned that even that extra height that you get from that double dome sapphire crystal is not too apparent. And I think that this is going to be a very comfortable wear uh, for a very wide variety of wrist sizes, whether you have a large wrist like me uh, or a smaller wrist. So the Mission Timer 1 apparently is a watch that was long in the making and, and definitely shows with this watch. It really does feel like that every single detail of the watch was heavily scrutinized over, uh, heavily deliberated, and the result, I think, is a field watch that's going to really hold up well to the rigors that the watch is designed for, but it's still going to look awesome in the process. The dial for me uh, is really the key feature that makes this watch for me. I love the gray dial. It's funny because I kind of feel about this the same way that I felt when I first saw the Christopher Ward uh, C65 GMT that you guys have seen me review on the channel before. I'm not really a gray dial guy. I think especially when a watch has a bracelet, uh, a gray dial, there, there's too much monochrome going on. There's too much similarity. But this watch, uh, getting it in hand, has kind of really changed my opinion uh, on gray dials in general. I don't know if it's just because it's this gray dial that I like so much or if I'm just seeing kind of gray dialed watches through a different light. But the color that the watch produces, again, is a beautiful shade of gray that can actually look black in much darker settings, but can look really stand out uh, when you're wearing the watch and photographing it, especially in, in rich sunlight. Again, I mentioned the countdown bezel. I definitely appreciate having that here as opposed to the elapsed time bezel. Uh, I love the red triangle at the top as well. Kind of gives you the feel of like classic dive watches, even though this is not a dive watch, but without making a watch that's deliberately trying to imitate um, you know, any specific reference or even just past watches. If you guys have been watching my reviews for a while, you do know that finishing is something that I pay a lot of attention to. And I do have to say that for a watch in this price range, the finishing on the watch is really impeccable. Uh, the bead blasted finish on the watch is really smooth to the touch. Hopefully the fact that it has a little bit of extra heat treatment will lend itself to being uh, a little bit more durable. I really like the double dome sapphire crystal as well. It's something that's not very obvious when you first look at the watch, but again, as soon as you start playing with angles, uh, it gives it some very cool visual flair uh, that other watches in this genre actually tend to avoid. Most field watches that I've handled uh, usually have flat crystals. So, and I know some people don't like that distortion when you get, you know, view the watch at a steep angle, but again, I think it makes the watch look a little bit more interesting. And again, I mentioned that it gives the watch some unnecessary height, but because the proportions of this watch are very good, um, I don't think that it's going to bother most people. Honestly, the biggest miss for me uh, with the Mission Timer 1 is the leather strap. Um, Color-wise, I think it's fantastic. Again, I think the red accent stitching that it has is is perfect. I think it's uh, it's just the right amount of color, and it doesn't distract away from the dial, which is what you're looking for. My biggest problem with the strap was how stiff the strap is. Um, I'm much more of a fan of a more supple leather strap, one that kind of hugs your wrist a little bit more. And it's funny because this is a review unit that's actually been passed around to a couple of different reviewers already, but it still hasn't really broken in the strap that well. It hasn't really softened. Um, so again, not a huge fan. Um, I actually wore this watch on the NATO strap uh, the majority of the time that I had it for sure, because I like that a lot better. And honestly, if I owned a Mission Timer 1, uh, it would probably be on a NATO more often than not anyway, just because I like that look uh, more for this style of watch than using a leather strap. The other big miss for me this watch uh, is going to be the date window. Now, I think they put it in the best place they could have put it, because I, I don't think I would have wanted to get rid of any of the other numerals on the dial, because I think that really does help it flow. I'm just not a big fan of 430 
uh, date windows in general. Uh, maybe if you were going to put it anywhere else, you could have stuck it uh, inside of the three there. Uh, but there would have been a lot of people that would not have liked that as well. But I personally, I would have just done without it. I, you know, you guys know me. I definitely don't need a date window uh, on most of the watches that I own. Now, even though I know uh, it's going to be in the comments on this video, I've I've avoided mentioning uh, the movement specifically because I wanted to wait until we talked about price and talked about value. So the Mission Timer 1 is $399, and I specifically mentioned everything else first that I liked about this watch because I hope that that illustrates that I do think that this watch is really good value for $400. I do know there's some of you out there watching that would never pay $399 for a quartz watch. And I don't think there's anything I could tell you that would change your mind if that is where your opinions lie. But one of the questions that I was curious to ask myself in using this watch when I had it is would I have enjoyed the Mission Timer one more if it did have a mechanical movement inside of it? And the fact of the matter is, I don't really know that I would have. I really enjoyed being able to just pick up this watch, strap it on and go and not really even have to think about it, not have to worry about setting the time on the watch. That's not something that I can really do with any of the other watches that I own aside from my digital watches. And I think that, you know, the the negative feelings of quartz, and I'm actually going to do a video about quartz in general, but I th I'm learning that the negative feelings uh, with quartz watches, I think have to do with the fact that most of the time, quartz watches tend to be cheaply made watches. And that's not what the Mission Timer 1 is. This is an extremely well-made watch. And I think there's definitely some advantage to having this quartz because this is a watch that is kind of meant to be able to go anywhere and do anything with you. It's it's a watch that you can just kind of strap on. You don't have to worry about setting the time, but you know it's going to hold up and it's going to be durable with whatever you're doing throughout the day. So I did not mind at all the fact that this is a quartz watch. And I think that there is, you know, quite a bit of competition in this space. But if you're looking for, again, a pick up and go watch that can go anywhere with you, that looks good in the process that's going to be reliable. I definitely think you should give a look uh, at Winfield and this Mission Timer 1 watch. I really enjoy the time that I spent with it. Uh, it's a great watch, a good value, and a great debut uh, from a new micro brand on the block. So guys, that's going to do it for my review of the Winfield Mission Timer 1. Uh, big thanks to Mark and Winfield Watch Company for loaning this watch in for me to check out here on the channel. If you guys like this video, hit the thumb down below. If you loved it, click the red subscribe button and ring the bell icon. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all the next time.